Hello YouTube, this is Gabriel David again. Um, basically today, I want, first of all, I want to start off by saying Happy New Year, Happy 2022. I hope it's going to be much better than 2021. 21, 2021 was an awful year for me. Uh, I got I contracted COVID in January of 2021 and, and I'm still in recovery, still suffer from a lot of neurological issues. However, I can still make music for months and months. I couldn't. Um, anyway, I'm very, 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 very happy that I can still uh, make music. And today, I'm basically making this video uh, because there's some. Uh, there has been some people who are asking me why I'm making music that sounds old. And that's not actually the case. The case is more that I'm making music that sounds more theatrical. It's not about music that's sounding old. Music never sounds old, at least to my music theory uh, knowledge. You might have old productions, but music does not sound old. Um, the reason I make theatrical music because I think there's more colors and there are more instruments, there's more elements into making one of these new uh, tracks. There are a lot more elements than making one of these than rather making something like a pop song or something, which I am pretty much involved with, with some other artists that commissioned me to make more modern sounding music, which I will so show some example of. And it's not hard. However, I feel that making something that has about 40 tracks much much more interesting and plus I do this for fun I don't really do music for a living these days I'm not a professional YouTube who just earn money through YouTube I'm, I'm a guy that I have a career and on my sideline I do something that I trained for years of doing and I take pride of every note that I hit um, so today's segment would be about a song that I just recently produced and some people thinking that I actually downloaded the playback from YouTube but it's 100% not true I actually made everything myself, built it from scratch following the, the original song and trying to hit every every note to the T so um, I will show you examples of what I did the song is uh, sung by uh, uh, a famous Israeli singer from the 80s by the name Zohar Hagol and God rest his soul. Uh, behind him he had a whole team of very highly educated musicians. Uh, some Israeli Philharmonica was involved in making his tracks. Um, and the producers and the conductors and all the people who put these tracks, this track in particular, together were very highly skilled people and highly educated musicians, which I don't see so much these days. All I see is people who are more technically, uh, computerly uh, inclined rather than actual musicians who can understand music frequencies, instrumentations, and all sorts of those type of things. And, sorry, I'm a little breathless because of the COVID, it's one of the side effects. So, uh, without further ado, I will just let you hear some parts of this song. And here it goes. Here we go. So this is the original song. Where
another thing I want to mention, and I'm going to say this in Hebrew, לכל הישראלים שרואים את הווידאו הזה, סליחה שאני עושה את זה באנגלית, אבל יש עולם שלם בעולם הזה שרוצה להבין את השירים ואת הקומפוזיציות, ולמה ואיך הם עשו את זה. אז אני עושה את זה גם בשבילהם, ואני יודע שרוב הישראלים אה, בזמנים שלנו היום מבינים אנגלית ככל שהוא יותר ופחות. אוקיי? Uh, okay. I will continue the clip. So as you heard, it's just a little romantic song. So I'm gonna let you hear my version of it without the original. Here it goes. I began the song almost identical so if I play them side to side they sound this way so they're both on now you can barely tell that they're both on So as you can hear, it's very theatrical. Now, why is this so important for music theory? Especially this song has some beautiful, beautiful pas passages, um, which sound phenomenal. So first I would like to come in with how I started the song. So as you hear, I'm going to play it from the beginning. And here it is. So first is the... the piano. And then I try to put some Brian May into it, which I think sounds beautiful. And if you hear the original track on YouTube, you will, you will feel it as well. And, you know, I, I can't do the whole thing sounding like Queen, but I want, I, you know, Queen, Brian May is one of my favorite players. And, but I, will, I want a little drop of it in my composition. And in thank God for technology, I can do this, the, this type of work these days. Here we go. <laughs> So, sorry about that, this is without the harmonies, we're going to go back, so here, this is all the harmonies, there we go, and then, so that's one way of, of, of you know showing an expression with you know with rock and roll guitar it's not actually it's me playing it's not Brian May I wish it was and so this is basically one part of this song and together they sound like this we're gonna go back and it sounds like this <laughs> Perfect. 
So this is why I enjoy what I do. This this is not for money uh, or for any type of uh, YouTube thing you know, or anything like this. In life, we get old, we get sick, we get you know at at one point we diminish when we longer no long longer here. I, and I hope this would reach this clip would reach uh, people down the line you know I, because you know a lot of people would say to me hey you know I wish I would know what Mozart was thinking when he wrote you know um, uh, Randa la Torza or Beethoven when he wrote his Ninth Symphony or Bach when he wrote Fata Fat Fuga de Dakata and, and no, we don't have those things these days. So basically, as a writer, as an artist, this is what I'm doing. And with this, with with this clip, with this video, uh, it's it's like a, to me, it's like a documentation of how I did what I did. Maybe my grandkids, maybe their grandkids will get to see this sometimes. But and this is really what I'm why I'm doing this. Um, and I hope people will appreciate these type of things. It's not always about money. I used to be an active musician and I, I used to get paid to play. And as years went on, I realized that it's not fun to play things that I didn't compose or I wasn't involved in. It's much fun to play things that I like. It's like I'm painting a portrait. Anyway, so let's go back into the song. So you heard the beginning. So you have, you know, uh, intro, verse, uh, second verse, and then a chorus. So the chorus goes like this. We're gonna go into the original song. sequencer running everything is it's real time so it goes slower faster it's not perfectly accurate if I would run the metro now as you can see over here it signifies my time signatures and it's not 100 percent accurate so given by doing this, uh, it was very, really, really hard uh, to track the real time, uh, real, real, real life timing. So let's go to my version of it. So let's go with the version. Let's see. So let's go to. So right here. 58.3 that means bar 58 on the third measure of bar 58 uh, by the way the song goes on triplets one two three one two three which is timing over here six eight uh, on the 16th measure so basically one two three one two three however if I were to conduct this song I would go one two three Four, one, two, three, four, and I will show you an example. Why is it this way? Because you can go one, two, three, one, two, three. It's too difficult for the hand movement, and that would confuse the orchestra. So therefore, you gotta go one, two, three, four. And if you have half measures, go one, two, one, two. So there we go. So now I'm going to do. I'm gonna put it off, and I'm gonna let you hear my my chorus so chorus basically the way i did it is i played it and trying to mimic his voice which is not which is not easy it's really really difficult and uh, and i'm doing it with a distortion guitar so I, and i will show you the way it sounds all together and the way it sounds by itself so here we go. So you hear. 
So let's go back to 53 point, uh, what was it, 58 point, I think, yeah, I think I was at 57.3, 57.3. Anyway, we'll go back another measure, because I only got the last measure, so we go over here. So, the guitar on its own, the solo guitar. So, what makes this song unique over? A lot of music. It's very simple. The way it, it was measured, the way it was put together. So, I'm going to take off this guitar and we're going to go without the guitar. We're going to do piano, we're going to do two pianos, we're going to do chorus, we're going to do string, and we're going to do the other string. Now, I'm going to show you a uh, French horn. Uh, sorry, trombone, a solo trumpet, second solo trumpet, one is for attack and one is for uh, sustain, and there is uh, actually rhythm trumpet, solo trumpet, for attack, solo trumpet, for sustain, saxophone, two, uh, French horn, and a tuba, and a side flute. So we're going to do this without the soul of the guitar and just those instruments to, to make you understand how well these compositions were made. to 3, 4 and there's one measure that has to be divided to just two, two clicks. One, two, before we go back to one, two, three, four, or else you're gonna have a big problem with the timing. So, as you hear, the trumpets are coming in with triads, which, uh, sorry, with, uh, dot, uh, with, with uh, minor, uh, minor uh, harmony, basically third, one, two, three, third steps. In some areas, and in some areas, they would go into the fifth step because it won't actually work. However, the tuba follows uh, uh, the tuba. I said the the trombone follows a very deep bass because this is what gives it that whole drive, that whole power. And the sax basically does exactly the same thing as the trumpets, and the flutes does the same thing as the sax. And the reason for is because it was really, really hard to follow the actual song, uh, because the mix those days were not so great. Uh, they have issues when you hear the original songs, they have issues where you feel that the instrument is a bit out of tune but it's not actual out of tune or the musician is playing out of tune no it's not what 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 what's really going on what's really going on is that the resident the residents of the room throws off uh, frequencies which makes it sound off tune i know this because i i i've spent some time on these old studios and they have those issues now and then and they did this without uh, any sort of isolators and compressors. They used to just go at it. Uh, the only thing that used to really uh, give them their, their beautiful sound is the actual rail-to-rail -rail that they use. And they use many of them in order to get everything. However, they still get Hess 
from the room which will throw off the sequence uh, which will throw off the way uh, the the frequencies of, of of the sounds so i'm gonna go back and show you how again the real one sounds with its harmonies which i co completely copy to the last t uh, so it, it matters because then you get the actual dynamics the way they actually did this track is back in the days is the 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 the, the, the writer would have all of the musicians put together little bits of music and you would just basically put it on paper and see which one really works for what timing and then he would decide what to put in and what to take out and it was all done by by paper believe it or not not by anything he can listen to back and repeat it he would just sit there and look at it and and this is where the genius is comes in you would see and say okay this frequency would overkill that so we're gonna put this here and that there this is how good these people used to be just with their brains without even listening to the tune and here we go we're gonna just put again the the track of the original See? the trumps the spanish trumps the violins with the trump So basically taking one step back, which sounds so, it actually sounds like uh, they're taking a, a step forward, the way he, he positions all of the, all of the, the, the notes together, the harmonies together, and it's really, really amazing. And all right, so let me, let me go to the next segment. The next segment would be, uh, I'm gonna find it. Uh, the next segment is actually pretty, pretty intricate. It was very, very intricate actually. Um, I'm gonna put it in this track. However, I'm gonna go to here and I'm gonna bring up the score. So we're gonna go back to the next segment. So, the chorus again. There we go. So, this is where it gets really complicated. It's a passage, what we call in music. So, completely going over to a different key. With this process, he went back two keys, unlike the other passage that you heard that he went back one key. So, uh, uh, let's see if I can get the, the sheet music over here. And basically, there, there, there it is. Okay, hold on. I'm going to bring it up. So let's try to go 75, let's see what happens. And we're going to mute this, and there we go. Basic Spanish here. So let's go a little forward, back to the passage. Uh, forward to the passage. Okay, let's try this one. Basically, moments. See, it goes down to right over here. So 
basically if you're gonna hear the solo track on its own from here 97 it goes why is it not sounding sorry about that should be sounding I think there's a glitch in my system here. Anyway, score. Basically, we took its tip. Dun, 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 dun. So on on the on we took it two steps back. Dun, 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 dun. On the third, so we do one step, one chromatic, one well the the final step, then chromatic, then another back step. And chromatic and then a whole step back which would basically land you at um, much uh, this is this is how this complex this is the complexity of the song so it, it lends you uh, at D, D flat dun, 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 which is basically uh, C sharp, sorry, C sharp, not B flat. Uh, would lend you at C sharp, and then you gotta do the same thing that you started at the beginning. Bam, 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 bam. basically the same steps but just going two steps uh, two steps forward so it would be like this go again I think those sound out you hear forward back to F minor back to F minor so if you if I'm gonna put it put it back in again, so here we go. We're gonna go, go back and I'm just gonna let you hear the whole full verse. Go back, another back. C sharp, Spanish scale. Back. 
So this is exactly the point that we started at. F minor. Just like in the beginning. It sounds like you're in a different place and this is why this uh, composition is so intricate. So you start at F minor and then you, you take a whole turn back uh, to one step, throw you off the mode and back to F minor again. And then as you go to dun, 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 and it goes another one, another step back to C sharp, which then you just follow a Spanish scale up and then you go back again to uh, to uh, to the to, to 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 the two steps forward back to F so it's basically E sharp um, sorry E and F da, 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 da. it lands back on F uh, sorry so it's da, 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 da. the top of the F would be uh, C so we go back to C sharp mm -hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, da, da, da. It's, it, this is really complex in, even in my brain uh, to, to create and I'm not so every since uh, you know I'm not too good with uh, reading of the charts these days I used to be much better at it I'm not too good with this these days but I used to be really fluent at it but the concepts is in my mind so it's basically step going back and forward which basically you start off here, you go one back, then you go back here, then you go one, two, three back, and then you go one, two, and back to the same place. And what, what happens in this whole thing, you sound like you basically, you don't even, when you're done going back to F, you don't even sound like you were the first F. And this is the genius about it. Alright, so let's go forward with this song. Again, we we start. Let's see. Let's see, I think we are here almost. So, back to course. So, and this is very, very, very interesting over here. So it starts with a regular scale. And in the middle of it, it'll, it'll, it'll go up one scale. And this is how genius this guy is. And it's almost flawless, but you're going now to the F sharp. This is where exactly you land. And this is where the song comes into. So if we're going to go back into it, you'll see the transition. So we hear and it goes. So over here. So it goes. But this time we're going forward one. Which basically. Which brings it to a different world. Just one key up the scales. And this is basically the theory I, 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 I like talking about. And this is why I make this music. The genius of it is, is amazing. It's, it's really, really hard to explain to people who don't have knowledge in music why this is such, so incredible. Uh, and you gotta understand that the people that wrote this stuff, they just basically wrote it in paper and they didn't hear, they played a little on piano and they did it and they did it and then they would consult with their trumpeters, they would control, control, uh, uh, consult with their celloists, with their violinists, with their harp player, with whatever they have with them and they would have to sit there and go through this music 
and it took him more time to plan the music out than actually to record it because once they have everything on paper uh, it's the time of the song that's how fast it was done so let's talk about uh, the beat to this song which is also fantastic I think uh, we're gonna go to the drum uh, it wasn't it wasn't really easy to uh, mimic these drums it's not like I'm using something that's pre-made for me so the drum is kick, snare, tons, hi-hat, uh, cymbals and then we have crash, crash cymbal so we'll go to one part of the song, here we go Basically, you hear where how complicated this mu this song is. It sounds very simple because, in actuality, it's a uh, it's basically a, um, what they call a minor minor harmonic scale. Very simple. However, the people who did this didn't create this simple. They did it complicated for a reason. Uh, because they didn't want to sound simple, they wanted to sound sophisticated. Uh, the budget to make something like this used to cost a lot of money. I'm talking about at least tens of thousands of dollars to get everybody sit in a room, engineers, musicians, and record it. Record this. People like Nancy Brandes were involved in such recordings. I don't know the rest of them, but I know that Nancy, I think Nancy did, did this one and he's a brilliant, brilliant um, uh, conductor and the way they did things is basically put it on paper, play it on piano, put it on paper, play it on piano consult and consult and consult and then Nancy would say okay let's try to bring it out to no, uh, bring it down two steps and then go back two steps higher and play it and then just go back to to, to original scale to trick everybody to thinking that the, the scale has changed and I used to sit in sessions and try to play this song and everybody thought that we already changed the scale but however the, the scale is on the same and then then bring it finish it up with a higher note and this they used to do this a lot in order uh, to want to create more time to the song because the song was too short uh, people wouldn't listen to it that many times. They like people like to listen to uh, to uh, to a little, little more excitement in the song. However, if you bring it up one pitch higher, uh, the song takes a whole different dynamics. And plus, you let the lead singer finish it on a higher note, which also highlights the singer. 
and this is why they did this. So let's go back to a, a different song I'm going to upload. All right. Uh, okay, wait a second. Okay. So uh, let's see. So I'm going to open. so many projects that I have here. So let's see what comes up. by Shimi Tabori. I think it's the same person who conducted the last one, did this one as well. I don't have a reference track to this uh, song. I might have it open, let me see. I think I do. This type of music we used to call uh, romantic music, so uh, like you know the Julio Iglesias stuff. So I, I remade this one, except I didn't I didn't do it I did it more ma in a modern way. So th there is my version. Here we go. So these are the guitars. That's the Gibson guitar playing. I try to give it that seventies feel. I also added a vocal there.
I heard there's a nice walk over. So in this song, what I did is I basically created old in you. So I gave it an update bit. Um, to make this one in, a, in the original way at that time was very, very challenging to me. I did it about a year ago. And I found it, I found it very challenging because the timing of this song was, the real timing of this song was not by anywhere, nowhere near sufficient. It was fast, slow, fast. It was too many, it was too many. And if I would have let, and I tried to follow the actual timing by metronoming it perfectly. However, when I played the actual track, it was going too fast, too slow, too fast, too slow. And it didn't work for me. So I basically kept it on a flat time and I recreated it on a flat time. And I'm sorry if I'm boring you guys, but um, maybe some of you would find this very interesting, maybe not. Uh, here it is. So I'm just gonna let you hear the whole thing for a second. So you hear it, violins. Very Hollywood, very soundtrack of a movie type. So I kept that essence. of this song. It sounds like something from the 70s without the fancy beat. The Gibson. So basically, they'll go one chromatic from the first to reach the one up 
and it sounds almost flawless. You wouldn't, you barely hear the the change, and really, it's amazing. <laughs> And I kept and another example that I kept all the original brass, pretty pretty original. Uh, again, to sound to mimic the '70s, and I, at least I think the '70s had great sounding uh, instruments, not so much in synths more as in guitars uh, and, and, and uh, pianos and things like that which recorded very very well in 70s and you know like if you see an old 70s show like The Love Boat or something you hear the soundtrack in the beginning oh, or listen to the Bee Gees or something it's remarkable what these people achieved but there we go, let's do it again So this is what the type of compositions are important and uh, if you hear the sounds of very 70s, however uh, they've done to very very high taste and high quality. Uh, people, people these days don't make sounds like that. Everything is so overproduced and all I hear mostly uh, at, at, with the new songs is sound effects. Or the sound effects, and uh, so basically, there we go. So if and over here I have the power. Deck. There you have it. I'll be happy to hear any comments and anything you like to add upon this music. And basically, this is why I make this stuff. It has nothing to do with eras or timings. It has more to do with compositions, and I like to make theatrical stuff. Anyway, it's been nice and pleasure showing you my side of making music. Uh, Again, please feel free to add some comments. And uh, there is other videos that I've made about keyboards, about guitars, about sounds and stuff like that. And I always like to interact with people over the, over the internet and people from all around the world. It's just a pleasure. Thank you and have a great year. Hope to see you again in the near future.